Hey guys, how's it going? It's the Crypto Analyst here, and I hope all of you guys are having a good morning, evening, wherever you guys are from. And Amazon has announced that they're joining the world of blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies through their new service, the Amazon Managed Blockchain. Now, this could be huge, so we're talking about the implications of what this could have on the future markets, how exactly this technology is going to be used for businesses and people moving forward, and everything in between. So if you guys are interested, go and stick around for the video. And do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button as it does help out the channel a lot. But that being said, let's go ahead and dive on into this. Now, if you guys don't know already, Amazon is the number one company in the world. So what they say kind of sets a standard for other smaller companies and people in general to follow. Now, we know that they are in fact so large and getting to the point that they are so large that some of the leading countries in the world are having to meet up because it's predicted that if nothing is done about Amazon, within the next 10 years, they are predicted to have a global monopoly over in the markets of the world. So that's exactly how big Amazon is and how much of an influence that they have. Now, with them coming out and saying that they are backing and not only backing, but actually offering services and using blockchain technology. Now they're saying now that we are using it and we enjoy it, now we want you guys to be able to use it as well. And thus they have opened up the Amazon managed blockchain, which is their new service where you can get easily where you can easily create and manage scalable blockchain networks through two different systems. Now the first one is going to be the, the frameworks hyperledger fabric. And then you're also going to have the Ethereum blockchain. Now this is unique because at first they were just going to be using uh, you know, the blockchain technology itself, but then they're all also offering a second side of this, which is the whole cryptocurrency side of this, offering that through Ethereum. Now, if you guys don't know the difference between these two, they actually explain it down here uh, you know, below. Now, um, basically to sum this up so we don't have to go into too much detail and keep this simple, the Hyperledger fabric is essentially a more private form of a blockchain. Um, it talks about this down here. It says the Hyperledger uh, fabric and Ethereum. The hyper, uh, excuse me, the Hyperledger fabric is a well suited for applicants that require uh, stringent privacy and permission controls with a known set of members. For example, a financial application where certain trade related data is only shared with selective banks, while Ethereum is suited for highly distributed blockchain networks where transparency of data for all members is important. For example, for example, a customer loyalty blockchain network that allows any retailer in the network to independently verify a user's activity across all members to redeem profit. So one is more of a private way of doing things within banking and one is more of a way for retailers into the market. Now this is huge because they're not targeting just a specific audience here. They're making this available for everyone to use, You know, whether you're a small business or a large business or you're a retailer or you're a bank or whatever you're doing here, they're able to say, hey, this is not only you know secure, but it's also scalable and it's also flexible on top of everything else. So no matter what kind of business you are, they are kind of saying, for this can almost really go to any scenario. And that's why it's so big because it's actually getting pushed by Amazon themselves, the number one company in the world right now. You know, everyone knows that, you know, Jeff Bezos is now the richest person in the world. They're one of the fastest growing uh, companies in the world now, all the way up to becoming the largest. And now they're actually threatening the global economy by causing a monopoly. And so now you're having countries themselves having to get involved and saying, all right, we gotta do something about this. But they have gotten to the point where they are that big. And this video is important because with them pushing Ethereum and blockchain technology, we know that the underlying, um, you know, with blockchain technology being used, you are slowly pushing cryptocurrencies more and more because with blockchain technology, it is meant for cryptocurrencies and cryptocurrencies are meant for blockchain technology. Now I know that cryptocurrencies were made on top of blockchain technology, but using one is like almost symbiotic where you use the other with it because there's almost no reason not to. Now they talk about this a little bit further down here where they talk about, you know, retail and everything else. And we'll get into their partners in a section, but uh, they really say that there is such a there, you know, there's really no reason not to use this because they even talk about down here, you know, using a central agency as an intermediary, basically saying using a middleman can take up to five to seven days while the Amazon managed blockchain or using a blockchain, you know, specifically saying, let's use the R blockchain since we're the Amazon one and we'll do it for you. <clears throat> If you use us, it'll take significantly less time because you're on the blockchain and probably 
if I would imagine they are transferring information and transferring money via cryptocurrency. So if you're on the Ethereum blockchain and you are doing large money transfers, it would be significantly faster to transfer money from the United States to, uh, to China over Ethereum. It would take under, you know, it would take a couple of minutes where if you did it in a bank, it would take five to five to seven business days. So, you know, one's significantly shorter than the other and the blockchain is just faster uh, in general. Well, of course, having this you know permanent ledger. Now, it talks about how this is all created and done for you, managed by Amazon. You can add people to your groups. So that you can you know select how you want it to work. It's very very detailed. And again, I want to keep this uh, relatively simple so that everyone can have a decent understanding of how exactly um, this is all going to work. But if you guys want to read more about this, I'll have a link to this article in the description below. But let's go over some of the benefits and then talk about some of these major customers that they have in, uh, that they have in here, like Liberty Mutual and Verizon and. Gar Guardian, um, you know, DTCC Workday, you know, a lot of big names in here. So that, you know, really the benefits and the pillars of this is that it's fully managed. It's your choice of either the Hyperledger fabric or Ethereum. It's scalable, it's secure, it's easy to analyze, it's blockchain activity, it's reliable. And they kind of give you this basic layout of saying, hey, Here's what you can do. You can use it for retail. You can use it for supply chain. You can use it for trading and asset transfer. There are a number of use case scenarios that you can really put the use here. And of course, these are the customers that they already have, all the large customers, excuse me, that they already have. So Amazon is placing a new standard in the world as we speak. With them, I think this is honestly so big because now what you have is you have the New York Stock Exchange, the Intercontinental Exchange, you have Bact, now you have Amazon. So what you have is you have essentially the largest stock you know, trading areas in the world coming together and say, we support blockchain and cryptocurrency. And then you have Amazon, the number one company in the world coming out and saying, hey, we now support blockchain and slowly and surely, you know, even cryptocurrency by supporting the Ethereum network um, and using that for asset transfers as it talks down about, you know, down here. Um, and it's just, I, I again, I think this is so big because we are starting to see these key little baby steps come for adoption. And what this could mean right now is not too much, but what this could mean maybe a year, two, three years from now is absolutely huge because these large companies, I've said this a million times, they are not going to get themselves into something where they are just going to have to bail themselves out in a couple of years. They are getting their, they're, they're, they are very smart and they're doing this strategically because blockchain, they believe that blockchain will be something huge in the future, probably believe that, that cryptocurrencies will be a huge part of the future and they want to get their feet in the water now before it's already a saturated market before everyone else is already doing this, they wanna make sure that they're in before everyone else. Sure, they are taking the slight risk, but when you have all these large name players getting into this and using this stuff, it's almost solidifying its place in history, saying this is not going to go anywhere. Because if, if the number one company in the world's using it, if the number one you know trading facilities such as NASDAQ and Intercontinental and the New York Stock Exchange are all using it, and some of the and most of the leading banks in the world are now trying to use blockchain technology as well as Walmart themselves, like if all these major companies, retailers, people, influencers are now supporting blockchain and through blockchain supporting cryptocurrency, you you can imagine that it's not going to go and just disappear off the face of the earth. So I just kind of want to plant that seed. You know, there is bigger things going on besides just the current price action of Bitcoin or of whatever altcoin that you hold. Look at the long-term benefits and the long-term steps that we are taking in the present day towards the future instead of just looking at the current price and saying, why isn't it going up? Or why isn't it going down? Or why isn't my trade going through? Look at the core concepts of what's happening besides the behind the scenes of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology and look at how much it's going to you know, affect the future and how much that this could have um, moving forward. So that's going to go ahead and round this video guys to an end. I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope you guys did find this useful. If you did, do not forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. I'm very active down there and I thank you guys so much for watching the video. But until next time guys, I will see you guys in the next video.